Hello 607, welcome to Off the Record with your weekly highlights of Delaware County news from The Reporter, the county's finest news source. I'm Andrew Cantor with the latest of what's happened and happening in the county this week. Did you know that podcast listeners like you can try the online version of The Reporter free for a month? Now you do. A month-long digital subscription is 5 bucks, but we've got a $5 promo code, so you get that month for free. Then you can decide if you want to keep getting your local news or you want to remain ignorant and confused. All you do is subscribe at the Reporter website, and that's the-reporter.net. Then you use the promo code SAVE5. That's all caps, S-A-V-E, and the number 5, to basically get the subscription free for a month. So in 2025, there are going to be two courts in Delaware County aimed at helping people who are drug addicts, or as we say today, have a substance abuse disorder. One is an existing program called Drug Treatment Court, and that tries to get treatment for the low-level, non-violent drug offenders rather than sending them to prison. It's kind of a win-win. The drug offenders, well, they stop being drug offenders, and Delaware County ends up with productive, tax-paying citizens. The other court is going to debut next year. It's kind of similar. It's called Substance Abuse Intervention Court. And this one is focused on preventing overdose deaths and keeping people out of prison. As family court judge Gary Rosa put it, it's their chance to prove they shouldn't go to prison and are more of a candidate for probation or treatment court. Everyone's on board with both ideas. Uh, the judges, the public defender's office, public health officials, probation officers, because obviously it's a lot better to help people with drug addiction than just locking them up. Well, almost everyone's on board. District Attorney Sean Smith, who is apparently living in the late 1980s, is still fighting a war on drugs, and he just wants to lock everyone up, even though the statistics show that sending people to prison just kind of puts them in an endless cycle of crime and punishment. Smith refuses to participate in the new intervention court, and he's pulled out of participating in the existing drug treatment court, claiming that trying to help people undermines public safety and promotes criminal activity. So how it's all going to work out isn't clear. People who support the program actually have data showing that those programs work. Smith, on the other hand, just feels like locking people up is better. That way, he can claim to be tough on crime, even though it's questionable whether he's actually helping anyone. The town of Walton is finding some good uses for the last of its American Rescue Plan funds. It's probably going to repair the business display sign at Bridge and Water Streets. That's the one that lists the businesses that are downtown. Thanks to the Biden administration, the $10,000 repair won't actually cost the town anything. In fact, it'll make some money for the town because it can charge businesses to advertise on the sign. But a couple of council members are iffy. One was worried that if the sign ends up being empty, it'll look like the downtown was empty. And another didn't think the town should spend taxpayers' money on advertising for businesses, even though it would actually cost those taxpayers nothing. Speaking of spending grant money, Arkville got itself more than 60 grand from a New York State program that helps volunteer fire departments. The fire department there is going to use the money to make some big repairs to its building, like a new concrete floor, new overhead bay doors, new windows, and even a section of roof. The building was constructed in the 1920s, so it's kind of due for an upgrade. In budget news, the town of Sydney's 2025 budget includes a 0% tax increase yet again. Uh, I was able to do that because of high interest rates on the town's CDs, but you know what the big boost was? Taxes from Green's Greenery Marijuana Dispensary. Those taxes are a minimum of 35 grand for the town. Meanwhile, Hamden wasn't quite so lucky. Residents there are looking at a 2.4% tax increase, mostly from the Delhi Fire Protection District. Hamden residents in that particular district will see a little bigger tax hike. But all in all, Hamden folks are looking at an average, an average increase, a little over a dollar a month. Walton's got a problem with people rescuing dogs that don't need rescuing. 
People apparently see a dog on a porch or a lawn and dog nap it, thinking the dog is a stray when it's just a dog that's outside. So Fido ends up at the Humane Society and the owner has to pay some fees to get him back. Dog control officer Rusty Way would like there to be some kind of a form for do-gooders to fill out when they quote-unquote rescue a dog from its own front lawn. Uh, it could save everyone a hassle because the owners could be notified immediately that their dog had been taken from their porch. The Franklin Planning Board is finally really getting close to approving Jonah Shaw's plan to turn the Kellogg Elementary School into a meat, fish, and cannabis processing center, as well as a hotel, motel, and event center. Shaw gave his revised plans to the board, and the board had a few changes like longer quiet hours, and they discussed some kind of privacy fence or property border. It looks like now the only question left is how much water the facility will use and whether the treadmill water system can meet the demand. And now we turn to Looking Back. News from the reporter 100, 100 years, years ago, ago this week. week. One Stamford property owner who had been troubled by trespassers and boys damaging his property contemplates taking some such action in the matter as the farmer who has the following notice posted on his farm. Quote, Trespassers will be persecuted to the full extent of two main mongrel dogs, which ain't never been overly sociable with strangers, and one double-barreled shotgun, which ain't loaded with no softy pillars. Damn if I ain't tired of this hell raining on my property. Animals are causing trouble. A Dodge sedan belonging to New York parties was overturned on the highway below Ernest Plouts' Sunday afternoon. Mr. Plouts' cows were straying by the roadside when the car collided with one of them and tipped over. The driver suffered a badly cut hand, but there were no other injuries. Much of the glass in the machine was smashed and the body twisted from the chassis. Meanwhile, little Betty Fife, the two-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James O. Fife of Hallway Station, was frightfully cut on the forehead on Friday by being kicked by a horse. She was taken at once to the office of Dr. W. R. Gladstone in Walton, where several stitches were taken close to the wound. It seems a miracle the child escaped being killed outright. Finally, in horrific accident news, while at work in the woods Monday afternoon, Floyd Miller of Mundale had the misfortune to have his left great toe badly injured by a tree striking it. Reverend Charles A. Day took him to Walton, where Dr. W.R. Gladstone dressed the injury. Three stitches were necessary to close the cut, and the end of the bone was slightly crushed. It is doing as well as can be expected. Back in 2024, there's a lot more Delaware County news in this week's edition of The Reporter. You can read about how Walton's Bassett Park just got itself a nifty little upgrade thanks to a pair of Girl Scouts. They designed and built an agility ramp, and they installed concrete benches in the park as part of their Silver Award project. And you can read how the Colchester Police Department and Justice Court got a fancy schmancy new building that's separate from the town hall and has a lot more room for meetings and equipment. And that's all just for starters. Remember, to get all the news that matters to you and your Delaware County community, subscribe to The Reporter at the-reporter.net or call 607-464-4009. We'll see you next week.